Good morning. Good morning, everyone. How are we doing this fine cheerleading morning? The Dormouse Desk, two months of subbing, Gamma Gamma, 11 months of subbing, Jay Schultz, EMS, four months of subbing, let's go. Good morning. How we feeling this morning, chat? How we feeling? I'm feeling pretty good here. Last stream before vacation. No streams next week. For those of you who are in here early, be prepared. Next week, no streams. Taking the week off. So, I'll miss you. I'll miss you. Allegedly. Allegedly. So, how's things going? Everyone good? Everyone good this morning? We got... Uh, we got some good news on the on the Twisby front this morning. I'll share with y'all if y'all haven't seen it already on on Twitter on the the Twisby Narwhal front. We'll talk about that. We got a gold spot unboxing to do today, and uh, yeah, so yeah, there we go. Next week, swim every morning. Got it. Yes, schedule schedule change next week. I will definitely miss you. I will definitely miss you. Yep. So. Good stuff going. Zzz, the Twisby stuff, yeah. Snooze. It's ready to be done with it, right? All right. Feeling great. Just got a cross Bailey blue lacquer fountain pen. Nice. Golden pencil. I mean, we could do golden pencils here. Golden pencil. We can do that. Naper Naper villain, 19 months of sub subbing. Let's go. Woof. Where my cheerleaders at, yo? Where my cheerleaders at? Sub aquatic toaster with the gifted sub. Two gifted subs. Where's my cheerleaders? Let's go. Let's go. <clears throat> yeah, we can, we can, we can bring it. Durfosen. We can, we can bring the goods here at the Panatic stream. Um, Twisby. Twisby, you cannot bring the goods. Again, Subaquatic Toaster, thank you. Two gifted subs, that's amazing. Enjoy your new emotes. We are working through the emotes uh, with the new batch of emotes for all of y'all. Um, we get those animated emotes, get some fun fun uh, bit emotes, get all that stuff. I am working through the process right now, hopefully to have them paid for today. And then uh, another couple weeks to get the art done. Today's pen is an Opus 88 with a Pilot 1.5 parallel ground into an architect. Can I write it dry today? That sounds crazy. I don't even know how that works. I don't even know how that works. So, um, all right, let's do the Twisby thing so we can uh, we can uh, move on. Amarillo station order incoming today. Nice. Um, Twisby apologized. So I'll read this for y'all. This was in my inbox this morning from a bunch of bunch of retailer friends. Twisby is pleased to announce that Twisby and Narwhal have settled their respective differences and concerns. We're going to come back to a lot of parts on this. Let me let me continue. Under the terms of the settlement, Twisby acknowledges that Narwhal has not violated any intellectual property rights of Twisby or any third party. Twisby's primary concern was Narwhal's use of the piston filler mechanism, which the subject of U.S. Patent Number blah 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 issued in. 1929. This patent expired March 26, 1946. After reaching an understanding on that issue, Twisby is convinced that its use of the term knockoffs, unethical, and design infringement concerning narwhal fountain pens was unfortunate and retracts those terms. Twisby and narwhal agree the piston filler mechanism is available for anyone to use as a result of the expiration of the patent. Twisby apologizes for any confusion that may have been caused. Again, we're going to rewind a lot of this. With the foregoing in mind, Twisby's current 2022 retailer policy has been revised to permit retailers to carry any competing brand. Of course, Twisby will continue to work to enhance the Twisby brand name and to select those retailers playing a vital role in maintaining the Twisby brand name. Out of an abundance of caution and for the advance avoidance of doubt, Twisby remains ready, willing, and able to supply your business with Twisby products, even though they may carry competing products subject to the policies and procedures of Twisby, as such policies and procedures may be modified from time to time at the total discretion of Twisby. Twisby looks forward to many more years of delivering exciting products to fountain pen enthusiasts. Happy writing, president of Twisby.
It, they apologized, which was more than I expected. Um, they didn't need to settle any differences because Narwhal did nothing wrong. So the settling of distant differences can, kind of gets me confused. Twisby was the only one at fault here. Um, Twisby stepped in it is what, <laughs> is what happened here. Twisby mega screwed up. Michelle PT with 11 months of sub and let's go. Let's go. So this is, it's good that they apologized. It's also pretty clear how big, I mean, they stepped in like, they stepped in it big time. <laughs> and this is their way of coming back out of it. They did okay. There was a bunch of stuff that they didn't really need to I don't know how they settled differences when there was no differences, right? I don't know how they but it it again, it is a good outcome. It's fine. Um they were going to get reamed in various ways if they continued down this path. So <sighs> so yeah, there we go. There we go. So <laughs> Twisby cracking just like their pens. Dang. Yeah. Could Narwhal have said of something, anything legally? Um, I think it's both. I think it's from Narwhal. I think it's pressure from Narwhal. It's like, look, man, we didn't do anything. Even your pictures show that we didn't do anything. And retailers saying, hey, you can't hold us hostage like that. So they were getting it from all fronts, I think is what happened here. So there we go. It's over with. Uh, Twisby, Twisby stepped in it and they figured out a way to scrape the poop off their shoes. They probably still need to take a hose to the shoe. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like it's, it's like, it's fine. It's fine. So at least, at least they use the word, at least they apologize directly. Like I'm good with that. So we'll move on. Uh, Twisby, the only harm to anyone was to Twisby in this case, and it was a self-immolation uh, situation. So glad that we're past that. It was really a non-issue. So so my blindness are not a poop emoji. Uh, maybe on Twisby, I mean, maybe on Twisby, maybe on Twitch, there's not TW, both TW words. TW. Tokyo Inklings inner wall with Frank was really good. Exactly. It was really good. So... All right, so we good with that? We good with that? Yeah, they'll be tracking that crap through the house a little while. <laughs> I'm just glad there was like an admission like that they took it too far and, and, and used the word apologize. Like, that's good. Like, I'm good with that. It's an interesting line. Mont Blanc chooses not to sell unless it's brick and mortar. Sailor didn't play with Goulet. Um... So can choose as long as it's not doing over competition. I mean, I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. So, um, yeah, it's also putting, it's also rewinding stuff, right? So, I don't, who knows? No one can answer those questions. Might be a hot take, but I think Twisby had to litigate to attempt to enforce intellectual property rights. Like the courts would give them enforceable rights if Twisby won and they can't get those outside of legal action. Yeah, but I don't know that they, they, I don't know that they had an intellectually intellectual property right to stand on, right? You can't argue what you don't own. So who knows? Who knows? I'm glad it's technically over, but uh yeah. All right. <laughs> who knows? St. Louis Pin Show, are y'all there yet? Are you there yet? I know Kimberly's almost there. She's on an airplane right now. Is Alan there yet? Is anyone there yet? It's only Thursday, but I know y'all are anxious, anxious to get there. So that will be the fun, the fun times today. Toby has joined us today. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good. 
You gonna hang out on the couch? So yeah, he's gonna hang out with us today. <laughs> Chomping at the bit, packing pins, nice. Are you going today? So, I will look forward to seeing all the St. Louis Pin Show uh, Instagrams. What's that? Do they have an official hang hashtag? STL Pin Show 2022? Something like that? Tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I imagine most people still, I mean, earliest most people are going to get there tomorrow unless they're a retailer or vendor or getting in tonight, you know, working. Toys to be still on the poop list? I mean, I think that's totally fair. <laughs> totally fair. She's not almost there. She's got hours of layover here in Denver. Oh, okay. So maybe I talked to her uh, on the first phase, first stage. We've been talking like a bunch this morning, like a couple hours ago. Wanted to go to the pin show, but stupid gas prices. Yeah, that's rough. Gas prices are brutal. Like this vacation is is not <laughs> like at the worst time, you know, as far as that stuff goes. All right, let's get into some fun. Let's get into some fun. So we got some gold spot stuff. We have a large box. I can only make it there tomorrow afternoon. So excited to make my first pin show. I think you will have a great time. So this is an order from Gold Spot. I paid. So I used my Gold Spot code when I ordered this. So I got 10% off. And then Gold Spot included at least one thing uh, at no charge for me to review outside of this outside of my order so there's your disclosures um, I paid for all of it minus the 10% discount that anyone can get um, if you need my code you can uh, email me and then um, they included something for me to check out um, gratis free all right let's see do I have my camera up yeah we're gonna go into this blind, so let's see what we got. I remember one thing I got, one thing I wanted to order, which was what delayed this package. They were waiting on a nib size for it, but uh, I can't remember anything else, so let's see what we got here. All right, Smand. Smand is in place, let's see what we got. Uh, do you have cartoons on here? Gold spot, no cartoons. We'll need this, because I'll forget what I have. Good morning, Corey. All right, we need the packing list. Why do people go to Gold Spot? Vanessa Zinc Chalet, Chalet as well. Chalet Drumgulls has the high end stuff. What is Gold Spot? I don't know. Why do people go to Goulet? Why do people? I don't. I don't even know what this question is. <laughs> I mean, people have their favorite pen stores that do good jobs for them. Are you saying what's their selling point? I I don't know. Like, what's their one thing? I mean, they do tons of. You know, store brands. All right. These are the new. All right. So Andrew says nobody go to Gold Spot. <laughs> I don't even know what this means. <sighs> All right. So we got these uh, Nebula Colorverse notepads. That's because you never go to Gold Spot, Andrew. How would you know? So these are the Colorverse pads, um, assumedly the new fountain pen friendly stuff, like that um, the Nebula Note is Colorverse. Inky Longhorn, 13 months of subbing, let's go. Ah. Um, so yeah, these are new kind of desk pads, which I, I really, really like. So um, just really like your small, what are this? Uh, 115 millimeters by 155 millimeters, 77 GSM ink proof, ink proof white paper. Does that mean uh, that means they're fountain pen friendly? We'll test this out here in a minute. Let me go through, let me go through some of this stuff a little more and then we'll test them out. So I think they have a few different sizes. I don't know that this is the only one I ordered. I probably ordered one specifically to give away because they seem. Wait, Nebula Note and Colorverse are the same company? Yes. Is that embossed? It's kind of just like printed on there. It's kind of almost like a printed on, on there, not necessarily uh, debossed, embossed. What you looking at? Thank you for the follow. 
Oh yeah, I did buy two of them. So I guess we're gonna give one of these away to y'all. So at some point in this stream, we'll do that. <laughs> what are you looking at? I see your message. It, it did get uh, <laughs> it did get blocked, and we'll we'll keep it that way. But uh, you are in the right place for the right stream. So there you go. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so yeah, we'll give one. We'll test one of these out and give one of these away here in a little bit. All right. So let's set those aside. All right, inks. Oh, okay. So I finally got some wearing oil inks. So I finally gave up on whatever I was getting shipped from wearing oil. Question: Ito Murasaki in the Twisby Iris Vac Seven Hundred. I mean, that ink goes in anything and everything, and I think the Iris Vac would be perfect for it. That's one of my favorite inks. Uh, whoa, there's like a uh, what do you call these little things where you hold them at a different angle? That's smart. That's fun. I like fun. Lenticular, sure. How cool is that? I was not 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 uh, expecting to see this. So yeah, so there's Cheshire Cat, and then he, or she, or they, creep up. How cool is that? Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. So it's this magenta e pink. Yeah, it's not a hologram, it's the lenticular. The ink needs to be better than the label book, though. Dang. That was rough, Thunder Viking. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, this is something we'll test out. I think this has a little bit of sheen, if I'm not m mistaken. So I, I can't I can't recall specifically what the images look like. But there you go. They include a nice little little image in there. But this is one of my favorite like ink color ranges. Like this purpley magenta is something that I really really um, came around to enjoying over the years. So. Very cool. All right, there's that. Well, I have a bunch of inks here on the top, so let's see what we have. So I think I just got a bunch of wearing wool inks from here. So so I think this is a shimmer. Ruby Jane, thank you for the follow, appreciate you. So I think this is a shimmery one. So this is Mind. So that's Alice in Wonderland's Cheshire Cat. This is Soseki Natsume Mind. There's every wearing wool ink has some kind of theme. There's like series of theme. There's like series after series of like three and four inks each or things like that. I think this one has some shimmer in it if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not. Oh, that looks crazy good. I like how they put the Pantone colors on here, the RGB range on here. That's really cool. Lately, I've seen a lot of talk about wearing oil inks, Colorverse inks, and dominant industry rings. Are they worth the hype? I mean, I haven't tested the wearing oil yet, but I like the dominant and the Colorverse. Like, they're very popular for a reason. All right, so we can't really see the color on here, so we won't have to test these out yet. Is it a new brand? New-ish. I mean, they've been around since at least last year. Um, if not a little bit longer, um, but they've just been able to come uh, over into the U.S. market from, are they Taiwanese or Korean? These colors look fan-freaking-tastic, though. Korean, thank you. Yep, made in Korea. There we go. All right, that's that one. I think I got one more here. You have to be out of touch. Never heard of that brand of inks. Ink, the ink market moves so fast, like it's impossible to keep up with. Absolutely love Colorverse and Dominant Industry inks that I've tried. Yep. I am a cat. I mean, that makes... That's worth ordering this ink. 
like just like period point blank i am a cat so this is the same series as this one the and i apologize this so soseki natsume i don't know what that is um i am also a cat so let's open how expensive are the inks uh they're expensive they're 20 dollars for 30 milliliters that falls in the expensive that's in the pricey range toby left toby left me so, okay so this is the shimmer one so this is the shimmer one i think it's a gray and gold shimmer really nice really nice bottle they're all book related maybe they have a bunch of different series oh it's a it's a uh um, manga. Gotcha. So this is a gray with gold shimmer. We'll have to test all these out. That's a lot of shimmer in here. Cool. I am not a cat. Yeah, these pads we're going to have to test out. So maybe we'll do a little ink sampling on these pads just to see how they do and see what these inks look like. Because these are all very interesting colors. I mean, I think the Cheshire Cat is the most basic then I think these are a little bit, um, the next two are a little bit more complex. So maybe standard shade, shading and glitter. I don't know. Very cool. It's available at the Dutch Pen Show, but not sure if they're worth it. I mean, they're getting good reviews. Like I said, I haven't tested them yet, but I think everyone that I follow speaks pretty positively of them. Thank you, Molly. Natsume Soseki was a novelist. I Am a Cat was one of his books. There you go. There you go. This is also the um, this is also the company that made the uh, the chicken set that I thought was so cool. So like the Korean chicken set where they had like the uh, the red and the uh, golden, like the spicy chicken and uh, the hot chicken and the standard fried chicken. I thought that was a really really cool cool idea. All right. Hey Darrow. Let's see. Goldspot did a great job packing this box, by the way. Really efficiently packed. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, this is one of the new Edison materials, I think, that I wanted to check out. Atta keys, thank you for the follow. Appreciate you. So, Edison Collier Azure Skies medium nib i think this is one of the bigger models which is why i got it in one of these very bright new chatoyant colors look at that look at that good morning tess cult pins and pure pins in the uk both carry wearing wool and dominant industry nice so yeah this is just a really pretty pretty material like this is normally this is not necessarily my size preference for pens for um for fountain pens but like unposted like and uncapped in writing it's really great and look at that look at that in y'all's camera like this is just a cool this is a really neat material like this is the kind of stuff i like right it's subtle but flashy yeah it's definitely not gonna post so this is just a model that I've never tried. And, you know, it's just something that, that was cool. I actually might have bought this for like a members giveaway or something like that. But it's cool how like you have the darkness and then the brightness and it kind of runs through the barrel like that. It's by far your favorite Edison model. See, I prefer the smaller ones, the Beaumont and the Newark. So the Newark is a gold spot exclusive and that's the one that I enjoyed from uh, last week. Uh, last year that was like my favorite pen I bought last year because it's and it's a smaller pen but yeah this is a really 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 pretty so the collar has been around a while and this is one of the um, newer material choices in the in the collar collier so yeah pretty and I got it with a medium nib to continue my belief that bigger pens equals bigger nibs got the little bookmark Sticker, all kinds of fun stuff in here. Cool. Really, really pretty. Aren't Esterbrook injected injection molded? I don't know. I don't think so, but I don't know. 
What makes Edison pin stay out from an Esterbrook SD? Yeah, I mean, just, what makes any maker pin stand out from any other maker pin? You just have to decide if you like that maker, how they shape pins, how they finish pins. Do you like the, do you like the barrel size? Like, you can like them both. You can like them all. You can like neither, right? There's not that much. I mean, if you want a technical difference, there's hardly any, right? So it's just what speaks to you uh, personally. So I don't, I mean, different shapes, different manufacturing processes, you know, different materials, all that kind of stuff, different stories. So yeah, I don't know that there is a huge difference. All right, Laban. Let's look at this stuff here. I got another Laban. Rosa. I like what LeBon's doing. Whenever I see non-standard inks on Amazon, they're always being sold by Stilo and Stilo. Really? 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 Uh, this is the one. I Okay, so I got the uh, I got the blue one from Van S, and then I got this color from uh, Gold Spot. What was the name of this color? This one's called Lilac. I like enjoy your lark slumberland studio so this is a really really pretty really pretty color i like this one uncapped i was honestly surprised at how similar the opus 88 halo was in size to the collier yeah i like the collier uncapped it's just it looks big and intimidating when it is capped but like this is more my size. This is like Sailor 1911 large size. Like I really, really good. Yeah, this is a great color, isn't it? The size of this nib. Fine, fine nib on this one. I like it and I hate the green in it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, it's a neat color. I, I think it's cool. It really looks works well with the gold trim. Yeah, the unusual combo. That's kind of why I, I dig it, right? Just something a little bit different. Is that a Bach nib? I don't know what Laban uses. It looks like a Bach feed. You can fully understand why I went with the Halo model instead of the larger models. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the Halo is a big pen, just relative to the other Opus's Opi. It's small, right? Aside from their pocket ones, I get that. So this looks like a Bach to me. Tess, are you uh, are you uh, doing text to speech? The Edison Pincher made it up cash acrylic resin, not injected molded like the less expensive ones. <laughs> so yeah, cool colors here. I hope these ship with the converter. Looks like the Diplomat feed. Yeah, converter. Gold really pops with it, yeah. And I got the blue one too, which also the gold really works with that too. So the Esterbrook pins are injection molded. Is that what you're saying? All right, cool. We like that one. It's a little too thin for Bach. Can maybe be a feed like the Monteverde than a Yovo nib. Yeah. Does anyone know what Laban? Um, what nibs these are? I'll have to check. It might it might be on the like the web page, or the product page for it. That color is really fitting for a Staler Studio ink. That is true. All right. This is what I was waiting for. I mean, this is what took so long to get here. Super average. Thank you for the follow. Esterbrook is definitely not injected molded, made on a lathe. See, I don't know these things. That's why when I get asked what's the difference, it's like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This one looks cool, and this one looks cool too. Um, this one I ordered for me to test. So this other stuff I got for either reviews or giveaways, like the Collier and the Laban, those will probably be like review pens for other people. This one I got for myself because I was curious. And they had to get an, and what took so long is they had to get an extra fine nib for it. 
Does that Laban have a model name? Yeah. Uh, Rosa, R-O-S-A. So this one, I was waiting for them to get me an extra fine nib on. And it's a metal. Looks like Laban might use a range of nibs. Some are Yovo, some look like Schmidt, some look like Bach. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So what model is this? 06, is that correct? D06, so this must be Arctic 6. This is the Arctic Blue Model 6, I believe. So it's a metal barrel pen, kind of like, you know, the Lamy looking style, threaded, very um, shaped, concave grip section, metal. So this whole metal's, barrel is metal, and it's got this neat finish. Um, it's very, like, tactile feeling. Like, it's not even matte. It's, like, more aggressive than that. How heavy? Medium heavy? Not too heavy. I can get out the scale here and check. But it's got a narrow grip section here, which I like, or a very strong taper down grip. And then the extra fine. These are steel nibs, by the way. These are expensive pens for steel nib pens, right? $200 plus dollars for steel nib pens. But I've been liking what Auto Hut is doing. And I like the shape of this pen with the big taper. Uh, what type of metal barrel? I don't know. Probably just like a, a probably just like a, a brass or something underneath. Most like if they're not aluminum, like the underlying material is usually brass that's coated. But I don't know for a fact. I have to look it up. That box is ineffective. Yeah, that box. The box doesn't work for the weight of the pen. Even though it's not overly heavy, like this pen. This pen needs like a, a cutout just like for the entirety of the pen itself. But then there's a cleaning cloth and a converter, things like that. Are we talking Icon weight or Y Studio weight? Y Studio weight. So it's not airy. I think it weighs more or less than the arrow. More, probably. I'm going to check it real quick. Ooh. I just ran over the. Uh... Ran over the packing. So we can we can look these up online. But it's definitely um, not an ultralight metal pen. It is has some weight to it, but I don't think it doesn't feel ridiculously heavy. So total weight, oh that's ounces. 46.8 grams total weight and then the the writing unposted weight 31.6 grams <sighs> texture on the barrel looks like that of the platinum procyon it's actually more tactile than that right i think that's procyon's a little bit smoother this one's a little bit rougher like in a good way like you can really really feel this texture Let's see if i can get it like you can really feel can really feel it or the Birmingham metal fleet plan I, <laughs> Sean shown design the smoltum I love that it's like a brushed metal finish but it's not completely like satin or matte you know the satin or matte you can feel it and it's kind of smooth this one it's smooth but a little bit a little bit rougher the nib looks a little bit too small for that grip I don't know, seems about right to me Right, this really tapers down here. Like this is a very interesting pen. Like this is not one for everybody. The way the grip is designed and the size. So I was anxious to. I was really anxious to try this out. This one out for myself, and see, because I I really enjoy the um, what's the Design 03 that I got? But it's nothing like this at all. Is that a spring clip? Yeah. So. The, you know, the Auto HUD is one of those brands that's tough to like really nail down because they're expensive for steel nib pens, but I kind of like them at the same time, right? Like they work for me. 
Um, this one will be interesting to try out because I thought this was a, a one of the more n uniquely designed auto hut pins that didn't really look like everything else. Dr. Mr. Punny, 11 months of subbing. Glad you're here. Glad you're here. Fiona, thank you for the follow. How do you refill it? It has a converter, ink converter, which I need to put it back in this box. So these pens use a converter. So what you would do is you put the converter in the pen and I'll show you another pen that's inked up. Dummy cartridge in here, that's trash. So you put this in here like that. You wind this down here. You get a bottle of ink. You dip the nib in there and then you wind this back up and it pulls ink into this space right here. Then you put it back into, in here and then you start to write. Oh, check this out, sick. This is my favorite thing that pen brands do. Hide stuff up in the top. All the other huts I've seen are too industrial looking for me and just a touch boring. Yeah, I mean, German, right? German, German engineering. Holy cow, that is $236. Yeah, that sounds right. That's all the auto huts are like in this price range. Like they're a uniquely priced offering, which is why I don't, I don't think you see them that much, right? So like the, was it the Design 03 that I reviewed or the 04? Like that one really, really spoke to me and it was over $200. I don't think, they may not have a model under $200 and then they're on up from there. So you can, what I'll end up comparing this to is a Lamy uh, Studio, which just in price and value, the Lamy Studio is gonna trounce this, right? But that doesn't mean this isn't a good pen. Right, so that's like the, the dilemma. Number five nib, I think so. It looks pretty small. But it almost looks like a five and a half type of situation. But maybe that's just the visual. They're all steel nibs. I mean, in this model they are, then they have more expensive models that are gold nibs. So, but any of the ones in the 200 range are all steel nibs. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, that's why one of the reasons why I got it because um, Auto Hut manufactures pens and parts for a lot of the other a lot of other brands. I mean, not Lamy. Lamy makes their own, but like some other brands, like you, they they're in the business of white labeling as well as making their own pens. So this is gonna be very interesting uh, review kind of setup. And you will definitely see me compare it against the Lamy Studio. And I'll just tell you that the Lamy Studio is going to be a better deal. But again, this can also be a good pen, right? So it's just, they're just so strangely priced. I, and y'all are right. And you're right, Thunder Viking. I don't love this box for it, but that's so well. You think they make a lot of parts for uh, Faber-Castell and Graphon Faber-Castell? Yeah, I totally agree. Like you can even see it in some of their own lines. It's like, oh, like I've seen that before probably. Let me see. Another reason I pass on auto huts, I can get more aesthetically interesting to me pens for that price. I, I totally agree. Yeah, that's why it's a such a tough price point. I agree with that. Let me see something here. Oh no, so the 04 is one I gave away. The 03 is the one that I like. So this is the one that I reviewed. How much is this one? And it's not for sale there anymore. $180, so this one was 180, which is like, it's like crazy. Like if you think about like what other brands do at the same time, I also like it, right? <laughs> but like the Y Studio, 
is around the same price, right? The one, the Y Studio that I like so much is like around 170, and I love that pen. So, oh look, look at me reviewing, thinking about what I was doing before. I didn't even see that, and I already knew what I was talking about. So yeah, the Y Studio there on top, one of my personal favorite pens. So of course I kind of like this one, and they're not that far off in price. It's just a different, different style, different aesthetic. The other one is a more traditional. The design of the. Design 04. I also don't love their naming conventions, Design 04 and whatever. So this one's $200. Well, is the Wave more expensive? No. Uh, they don't have it. Wave. What are these? 316. Yeah, so the one I have was more expensive. <laughs> So the one I had, the blue one, this one is more like three hundred dollars. So that okay, so this one was two hundred eighty dollars. So, so there you go. So they're expensive. They are definitely priced. Um, priced above a lot of their competition. So you have to like be really into like exactly what they're selling you to pay that premium price. So yeah, it's it's a interesting exploration. I like the look of some of them. The price just puts me off. Yeah, I think that's totally valid criticism for the, the brand as a whole. Right? It's like, I like it. Would I recommend it? Well... There's a list of things, you know. Make your Nakaya get here faster. Oof. I like Auto Hut. I just don't know how often it's the answer to a question, right? All right. Last one. This is the one that they included. This is that new brand you've been seeing around. What's it called? Kilk, click, what is this one called? So this one, all that other stuff I bought, this one they they included uh, free gratis. What are these, click, is that the name of it? So I've seen these around. Orange, of course. Is it Kilk, Kilk. Kilk Orient Orange, handmade in Istanbul, Turkey. Have the 04 and the cap is so heavy, not a poster. Yeah, definitely not a poster. Because it's it's just that little nub on the back of the uh, the back of the barrel that just makes it super, super long. Alright. I like their logo. Orient fountain pen, warranty card, cleaning cloth, use and care. All right. Ooh, that feels good. Kilk, is it Kilk? I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. It's K-I-L-K, -K, but that doesn't mean that's how it's pronounced. All right. So this is, again, what model? Orient? Yeah. It's actually kind of shaped a lot like the uh, like the auto hood I just had, but in acrylic. So very bright and bold and brash, very large cap diameter. Oh, most of these like I don't think any of these are personal pens, Tess. So that's where the uh, that's where the division lies, right? So like I don't know that. I'm keeping any of this stuff, right? So yeah, it's like a mega fat cap and a mega skinny barrel because it looks like it's trying to tell you to post it deep on here. So we'll test that. Oh, yeah. So it wants you to post it deeply on here. 
So it actually took a second. You have to like thread it into like the cap hole. Like you can just, you have to find the opening there. So it's for someone who likes bigger pins and has them posted, it's not horrible. Like I would never use it like this, right? So this feels good. Like it's a cool acrylic, it's cool orange. I like the, I like the, um, the belly band. See if we can get this in here. I like the hardware. The barrel band there is very nice. Let's take it all apart here. So that's cool. Someone look up. Uh, someone look up how much these are. I don't know. Yeah, it's a very pretty material. It's a very sharp, not sharp to the touch, but it's like a very like truncated end to the pen. Two sixty. Okay. So this is more expensive than the auto hut. How do you feel about that? The dimensions are funky. Like, yeah, I, I appreciate that though, right? It was like, you know, as a, as a fan of the traditional cigar, cigar, cigar shaped fountain pen, do I want every pen to be cigar shaped? No, let's do something a little different. So it's cool shape, cool little uh, highlight there. Uh, Bach nib, fine. Kilk on there. And then the cap, I like the, the clip is nice. I like the material, I like the shape, feels good, feels tight. So now, compared to the Auto Hut, which we were aghast at the pricing, right? Do we feel the same here? If so, why? If not, why not? Right? That's all kinds of not for me. <laughs> I hear you. Um, I'm a little perplexed at the design choice here at the end. We'll see. It feels good. You know, I like how far off are we from my favorite uh, $150 to $200 fountain pens being in this price range? That's what I'm worried about, right? Darrow, two months of sub, and thank you so much. I'm glad to participate in person. Thanks for posting the VODs to YouTube. I like to watch them because I usually can't make it in person. Nice. Glad you like them. FC Intrinsic in. Click accents the design with aged matte 925 sterling silver accents. Okay, so that's a bonus. That's a, that's a cost, right? So there you go. That's uh, important information. As we consider consider the lobster, right? 925 silver. So... I mean, it's something. It's not nothing, but yeah, it's like how much? How much uh, do you want to pay for? They have a model in the one hundred and fifty to two hundred range. Okay, so maybe the silver accents are the upgraded, uh, or like the 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 tier two pen from the uh, upgrade from the the base level pen. Thank you, neighbor villain. So the epigram is what we want. I'm not a fan of that design for greater than two hundred. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I do like that it'll stand up on its own. Right? That's a bonus. How many pins can do that? <laughs> Interesting, but at that price range, I'd be considering a custom Edison. It's the same price as the purple, which has more silver. All right, let me look at these two. The, the clip is the only thing that has the marking on it. The clip has the 925 under here. Let's see if I can get it for you. The clip is actually stamped. Take that for what it what it's worth. So the clip is actually stamped. They just look like they're finished a little bit differently. Flat finning Olympus stands on both ends. <laughs> All right, let me look at these other two here. Get that. Tail standing is a criteria. Uh-oh. All right. 
let's see here. So this is the epigram. I actually like this orange one better. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get a good picture here. I like the orange one better. What are you taking to read on your vacation? I will answer that question. I started a new book last night. Um, I actually prefer this model better than the epigram. But we're almost at $100 difference between the two. That's a big, that's a big ask, right? And then this one is 260. This one has a little more hardware, a little more pieces, parts. Is this one a piston filler? Why does it have that knob on the end? No, it's a cartridge converter. I wonder if it's like a captured converter situation. I'm just wondering why it's got that notch on the end here. Because it says the cap's not designed to be posted, so I don't know. Destiny Gamer, nice. Yeah, I used to play a lot more than I do now. I used to play a lot, and right now I'm playing none. No, what you hear is the uh, washing machine going without the door being, sh being shut. I'm not even sure that comes off. Is that like a... Like a captured converter type of type of situation. Yeah, I don't think it's a blind cap. I think it's just a notch in the barrel. So anyway. Um, so yeah, let's go back over here. So yeah, so this is like the so the epigram is the quote entry level. Kilk, which I, I'll admit, I don't, like the shape is fine. I just don't love it for myself. Um, the Orient is the step up and then the Celestial and these other two are a little bit more expensive than that. Well, I gotta say that this is at least my favorite looking one of the bunch. I just don't know if I like the end or not. We gotta think about that. Interesting. The natural tension of curves found in Eastern design philosophy. Like it's growing on me. I'm just not used to just such a harsh termination at the end, but like it's a different, you know, it's a different, uh, different thing for me. It is designed to deeply post though, which if you're a poster of pens, this one's made to do it. And if you like bigger pens. Interesting. Okay, so yeah, that'll be cool. I do like the spinny finial on the, <laughs> the Lanterna. Yeah, I saw uh, Fig Boot had that one. Was doing the fidget spinner thing. So that was cool. So yeah, like out of, if I had to choose one of these, I, I do like the Celestial one. I think the Celestial one looks pretty cool. Um, and then it's probably the Orient. This one looks pretty cool. Which is like the one we were just showing on the other page. Comes in a bunch of... Oh, no, these are just all their different models. Okay, cool. Spinial, nice. Nice. Okay, so yeah, we'll be reviewing this and we'll have some thoughts on it. Just like with the auto hut, all these will be reviewed. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know if I'll review the collier or not. We'll see. All right, let me, uh, let's do a giveaway. We haven't given away um, anything yet. So let's do that. We're definitely gonna give away one of these notepads. Oops, one more. Sorry, just put 
getting all my stuff out of my way here. Love just review on the beloved Kakuno Teal. That's such a good looking pen, isn't it? And an awesome writer, right? So good. So good. All right, oops. About to forget that Laban. All right, let's do this. Let's give away. Nebula Colorverse Kingdom Series Notepad. And you can pick whatever color you want of ink from Wearing Ool. So this will be a, a combo combo giveaway. It's probably the only giveaway I'm going to have time to do today. So I think I'm going to have to wrap it up all right after this. So I'll let you pick an ink. And... This pad, and once we're done, I'll, I will uh, I will test this uh, pad myself to see if it's fountain pen friendly. Kakuno is the goat of the inexpensive pens, right? It's really great. That should be the only pen I take on vacation with me, right? <laughs> it's a great joyful review. It's hard to like with the Kakuno does. It just makes you smile, right? Like the Kakuno, it just makes you smile. Like it's that good. All right, so we'll do Nebula X wearing wool. Stereo sound, 23 months of seven, let's go. All right, the giveaway is open. Exclamation point raffle is how you enter. You must be present to win. You don't have to be a follower, subscriber, or any of that stuff. You don't have to live in the United States. And you can pick, well, you're going to get this pad, and then you can pick one of these inks. Can I put an 05 Jetstream refill in the Uni Jetstream Edge 0.38 body? Uh, you have to buy the specific Edge refill. So there's a lot of different size Jetstream refills. I don't know if they make an 05 one for that one, but it's a specific size. So you just go to jet pins and they'll they'll do the compatibility thing. Because not all Jetstream refills fit all Jetstream pins. All right, I'm gonna test this out myself. This is the, the vacation pins. Let's see what we got here. Oops. I was born. All right, so this is the Colorverse Nebula. I like the pad style. Brad, I caught my plotter mini five ring. It's great. It's in my wallet and pocket notebook using the card holder inserts. I need to think about that. You know, putting an orange ink in this nib was probably a bad idea because the orange inks are drier and this nib like requires a lot of ink to go to start and you can see it's just hard starting. Like it's probably not my best idea. Lame. Lame. God, that drives me crazy. Love the front of the show episode with Jessica. I was so excited when she said she was an epidemiologist because that's what I'm studying. She was super cool. That was a really fun uh, interview. Glad you liked that one. All right, I'll do this. I'll pick this giveaway winner. Wait, winner, in one second. I don't really have anything to push these inks on this paper. 
I do like that it's stark white. I thought that was the Vinta Gold Dusk, so I had to correct that yesterday. That ink was too inky for that pen, which now, in retrospect, I picked something completely on the opposite end of the spectrum. But basically, that ink is so shimmery, which is great, that it was ba it was raising the lines up off the page the way it flowed from this nib with that type of flex on this nib. Yeah, this feels like Rhodia paper, despite the fact that it looks at it and makes me think of it. I don't really have any bigger uh, fountain pens to test out. All right, let's pick a winner while I'm messing around with this. Brady, you also put around on reducing inks and stationery like you're doing on pens. Inks, for sure. Uh, notebooks, I don't have like a ridiculous amount of. So I, I generally, I mean, I have too many notebooks, but it's not like a, like, boy, I'm really in the ditch here like I am with pens and inks. I will do something with inks for sure. Cristiano Paradiso, thank you for the follow. All right, pick a winner. Boss Baker Chris. Have you, have you ever actually won Boss Baker Chris? I feel like you have, but I'm not sure. Boss Baker Chris, you win the pad and... I'm reading your what a chick. I mean, <laughs> that's that. Hey, that's good. Uh, what a chick, Boss Baker Chris. You there? We might end up changing this out again for uh, for vacation. Maybe we just ink up the auto hut now and we swap that out for this one. Although we can't. Uh, we need to keep this ink. So this is a feed, um, a feed and delivery issue with this one. Second time, nice. All right, so I'm gonna get you to pick an ink. Hold on one second, because this is really burning me up. I am so mad right now. There we go. All right, there it goes. Thank you. You're not fired yet. So this nib, this nib needs lots of flow. Lots of ink flow. All right, hang on one second, Boss Baker Chris, and I'm going to get you to pick an ink, unless you know already. Do you need me to show you the inks again? It's a titanium nib, so it's flexy or springy, soft, right? So you see how... If you were to suck on a nib feed that isn't riding like siphoning gas from a car, would it work? I mean, technically it would work, but it would be a terrible idea. Like, cause you just don't need to because you can just push the ink down from the converter or the piston. <clears throat> Oh, look, the back of the paper is not dotted. It's just the front side. Okay, I'll show you, Boss Baker Chris. That's interesting. The back side of the paper is blank. So it's handling, there's no feathering. Yeah, I mean, it's good fountain pen paper, right? All right, so we have Cheshire Cat. Let's see if I can pull these up. Cheshire Cat, Mind, and I am a cat. So let me uh, see if I can pull these. Yeah, I know a lot of people will like lick the nib, but not um, just like try to like draw ink out um, because you don't need to, right? Not letting Corey near any of my pens ever, right? Let's see here. I'll pull up some samples on the page, unless you know. All right, so we have... Ah, wrong button. All right, we got this one. Let 
this one, and this one. Okay, so these are the three colors. So this is a blue, kind of a shady blue-gray. All right, then there's the bright pink Cheshire Cat. That's the only image for that one. And then there is this one, which is gray. This one's kind of wild. This one's like kind of a midnight gray, blue shimmer. That's kind of wild. So it's kind of a lighter blue black, a magenta, and then a shimmer. So can you tell by these images? Is that the one? Yeah, mine. So that's like a bluish black, hot pink. I bought the minding and was a little disappointed. Which one's mine? This one. Why? Was it kind of flat? Didn't look like the swatches? Was it just kind of your basic? And then we have the sparkly, sparkly over here. You're a cat. All right. That looks pretty wild. That looks like a, this looks like a cool ink. <laughs> that's pretty wild looking. All right, so you're a cat, and you're getting this ink. If I was born, I started. All right, so we got I am a cat, and we've got your notepad here. All right, Boss Baker Chris, if you want me to ship this today, you need to email me your address now. Otherwise, it's going to be like a week. Which is fine too, so. All right. All right, corgis are not super fountain pen friendly, chat. Corgi sticky notes, not that fountain pen friendly, even though you couldn't see that. All right, gotcha. And anyone else who won something earlier this week, that's gonna ship out today. Everyone knows that, Brad? What, my shipping? All right. So this paper, I'm a little bit confused here. Sorry, I just want to play around with this a little bit more. Oh, corgis aren't found pen friendly. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> Swatch on it. Yeah, let me see what I got here. Sorry y'all can hear that washing machine. I'm too lazy to get up and shut the door. I'm wondering if this paper might be a little thin for like the swatches we're about to find out. Let's do... Let's do the Piloncitos. See if I can get some of this green out of here, which is a, just a great color. I really love this ink. I just couldn't deal with the amount of shimmer in that nib. So we have our uh, Kakamori Steel. Updating Mac Fans Control App. Was that message intended for us? <clears throat> Nothing. This underlying green is so good.
I'm also nervous that I have this bottle sitting here open. All right, see you at Slumberland Studio. See you when I get back. Thank you. See, this is what I wanted from uh, that nib. Like, I want to see the green and then have the gold shimmer on top of it. And that nib is so wet, once it gets going, it was just full gold shimmer, which is fine. It was just not my expectation. <laughs> That's what I was saying, <laughs> calm out, Dell. I was making myself nervous there. I missed the Cheshire Cat ink. I didn't I didn't swatch it. I might have to ink that up and uh I I don't think it's going to change color. I think it's just a like a maybe like a slightly shading magenta ink. I really just think it's just, it's not really designed for that. What's the finest nib you nib you usually use for shimmer ink like a medium? See, that's way different than what I was getting, that image I put on Instagram, and that's just the nib difference, right? Like, I'll show you. If y'all didn't see this yesterday. So that's what I got yesterday. Where my lines, this pen is so inky from the nib, which is good, but it just made it into a gold shimmer paint marker. Where the where this was my expectation was this. Right? That's a good ink for the Laban pen. Yeah, that might be a good call, actually. So this is what I was expecting and this is what I got and I couldn't deal with that. <laughs> if it would have, if I would have been, if my writing would have been like this, I would have been happy. So as far as the swatching goes on here, yeah, it's not bad. Like this, this paper handles the fountain pen ink well. Um, what I think we will do is I knew I wouldn't be able to stand it. I think I'm going to go ahead and ink up the, um, the auto hut. I wonder if I would have kept writing with Max Shimmer. Oh, I wrote I wrote a bunch with the pen outside of that sample, Inky Love. Yeah, it was, I never really got to any green. The way that nib delivers the ink, I could never get to the green because it was always having something on top of the surface layer. So like when you write like this, and why I think a stub nib is going to do better is because this metal flattens out those lines, right? It pushes these lines around where when I'm spreading the tines on the nib, it's just pooling ink on top of it, if that makes sense. So I think that was just like, just like a, the, a, a, the mental, like the fatal flaw in that thought process, right? All right, so here we go. We're gonna do what I said I didn't know I was gonna do, or, uh, but I feel like the Cheshire Cat ink is kind of the, the right match for the um, Auto Hut Frosty pen plus it's extra fine so let's do it so yeah like i could never get to the green the way this nib delivers ink to the page is the venta shimmer quite heavy does it settle quickly in the bottle converter um it seemed pretty light to me it's just heavy in quantity but light in the liquid if that makes sense that's the way i feel about it little waffle squaffle thank you for the follow appreciate you all right so we're going to ink this up with the pink ink like this is the perfect pink ink pen i hope that makes sense like somehow like it's a small particle shimmer so to me that uh that floats pretty well and it's just not completely heavy which I think is what you're asking me. The shimmer particles are not completely heavy. I didn't. I don't feel that they are. All 
do I want to do this? I'm already having regrets. All I can see now is Glacier Lamy Studio, right? You know, I already have the Crimson ink inked up it. No regrets. See, I already have this inked up. I already have kind of a pinkish red inked up. This is how I get myself with too many inked pens. Let's do it, Brad. What are you inking the auto with? This. Cheshire Cat. Do it, do it. I need to get a paper towel real quick if I'm going to do this. Well, no, I can just use the paper. You do have a whole vacation to ponder it. I know. Right? Just do it. I am just going to do it with the converter since I don't really have any way to clean this off. Here, you can get a good look at the ink here. That's a good color. Sorry, I don't like ink on the outside of my converters when I'm doing this. I am living on the edge. novel swatching method, right? It got a good amount of ink on the page, didn't it? So this will probably take a minute to flow. God, these nibs are so nice. They're really firm. <laughs> I really like this nib. I mean, I'm guessing it's Yovo, but I don't even know. Looks like the Faber-Castell nibs, right? It is so firm. It's extra fine and firm. Like, this is going to be my jam. Like, I'm totally going to love this pen, but I don't know that I can recommend it, like, it's such a it's a dilemma pen, right? We have lots of pens in the in the dilemma range today. Oh, look at that. God, this feels I love this section and this nib. No pen rinse first. I never do that. I can't tell you the last time I rinsed a pen before testing it. Sometimes on Lamy's, like I'll test the nib um, to see, like if there's some, like you get some blue residue, but I really don't. Could this make it in the Panatic 100? It depends. Like I love the grip section. Like that's the main selling point to me. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, doing that first rinse is probably the smart thing to do. I've, that's just never been in my habit. This is a good color. So this, uh, this paper really doesn't feather. And it really hasn't bled through the black. So the nib feels smaller than the Y Studio Benu nibs, uh, smaller as like the line thickness or like the physical shape of the nib. I am still on. I know I'm trying to leave. I really got a lot of stuff to do, but I'm having too much fun. Too much fun. Similar. Um, I'd have to get them back out. Because I don't use the stock nib with my Y Studio. <laughs> it feels firmer. When I've used the Schmidt stock nibs in the Y Studio, there's some softness to them. This is like extremely firm. Yeah, this is the Auto Hut. Is it the 06? Yeah, this is the 06. This is an extremely firm nib, which I enjoy. All right, let's wrap it here today, chat. I got shipping to do. 
Y Studio feels very firm to me. Maybe it's been a while since I've tested it. So I can say I recommend this paper. It feels pretty good. It's definitely handling the fountain pen inks pretty well. Looks like the Lamy Studio, but different grip and like two and a half times the price for sure. Mafia Geek, yeah, I'm pretty much with you, which is why the 03 worked for me to keep. The 04 didn't, even though it was great. And this one is kind of going to be in between those two. Have a great vacation. Please confirm broadcast schedule for next week. Broad Twitch broadcast schedule next week is zero streams. All right. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, no streams. Okay. We'll have a podcast posted on Wednesday next week. We didn't post it this week. We recorded it yesterday to publish next week. Um, outside of that, blog content is pretty much the same, I think. But yeah, take a few days off chill then we'll be back we'll be back in like a week and a half um i'll miss you i'll miss you guys but yeah we will be uh we'll be right back at it what first week of july is that where we're at right now being on, yep first week of july and then uh we'll go straight through until the san francisco pin show mark the vacation in your calendar i got to do that today that i'm gonna put that right it's right here so we're gonna put that right in front of me so i get that done afterwards so right here i appreciate y'all hanging i appreciate all your support um i appreciate all your well wishes on uh my pending vacation and uh i'll be around i'll be if you follow me on twitter or instagram i'll probably be testing out some of these pins um i have other things in here to test too um so yeah Big Fat Panda, thank you for the follow. Unfortunately, I'm about to bail out on you today. Chat, let's wrap it up. All right. Thanks for all the well wishes. I'll be online. I'll see you, but I won't see you on the stream. We'll see you soon. Thank you all. Bye.